Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, we present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon by special recording. Brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. Bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Weekends are wonderful when you stay tuned to Mutual. Gay entertainment to suit every member of your family puts bright sparkle into your days of fun and relaxation. For anyone who likes quiz games, and that includes just about everyone, there's the kind you like where you can sit back and see how close the contestants come to the answer. There's music, too, of course, on Mutual's weekend schedule. Lowbrow or highbrow, you can take your choice. From full-scale productions of your favorite operas and operettas with all-star singing and dramatic casts to swing your partner sessions of real old-fashioned barn dance jamboree, you can take your choice on Mutual. Your need for late news headlines from the field of sports as well as on the national and international scene is not neglected on the weekend either. Fifteen-minute roundups plus brief five-minute digests come your way regularly. Gather your family around this weekend and enjoy entertainment on Mutual where there's something for everyone. All heard every weekend over most of these stations. Steve Walker lay on his bunk with a raging fever and forced himself to write a letter. He had just finished when the door opened and his partner, Frank Bryan, entered the cabin. Oh, man, it's blood. Must be 60 below outside. Any sign of a break in the weather? No, no, it doesn't look like it. Mm. How you feeling, Steve? <coughs> oh, rotten. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. Hey, what are you doing with that pencil and paper? I've been writing a letter to Lucy. Letter to Lucy? Well, come. You know why as well as I do. Don't talk riddles. This isn't just a bad cold I've got. It's pneumonia. Maybe I'll pull through and maybe I won't. <coughs> the way I feel right now, it's two to one that I won't. Oh, now, don't talk that way, Steve. Why not? It's no use kidding myself. We're 200 miles from the nearest doctor. If I don't pull through, you'll be sure and give this letter to Lucy, won't you, Frank? All right, Steve. I still hate to hear you talk this way. <clears throat> Something else I want you to do for me. Oh, sure, anything. If, if I do die, I know my share of the claim will go to you and Casper Lubbock. Well, that's right. That's the way the agreement was drawn when Casper Grubbs take this. It's a three-way partnership. If one of us should die, he'd share the claim past the surviving partner. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. But my share of the gold that we've already mined belongs to me. If it turns out my number's up, I want you to take that gold and give it to Lucy. Well, sure, sure. You were kind of sweet on me yourself, weren't you, Frank? Sure. <laughs> Until you came along... But you're the one she fell in love with. Now, now, for Pete's sake, stop worrying and try to get some sleep. You shouldn't be talking so much anyway. That evening, Steve's temperature mounted higher and higher. And at times throughout the night, he became delirious. 
Late the following morning, he temporarily regained consciousness. To his surprise, the cabin door was flopping wide open as an icy blast of wind poured in from the outside. The cabin was numbingly cold. Please. Frank! Frank! He's not here. The fire's out. There's no wood left in the wood box. And no food on the shelf. The place is cleaned out. He's pulled out on me. He left me here to die. Oh, no. A week later, Frank Bryan arrived in Dawson City. His first stop was Casper Lubbock's general store. Oh, 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 you huskies. Oh. Jasper Lubbock was standing behind the counter with his assistant, known as Louis. Well, my Sunday, me Frank Bryan. Uh, howdy, Casper. Oh, hello there, Louis. Hello, Monsieur. Uh, from the looks of you, you just got into town. Yeah, that's right. Where's Steve? He's dead. Dead? What happened to him? Came down with pneumonia. Died a couple of days later. There wasn't much I could do for him. That's terrible, terrible. Yeah. It was quite a shock. But I reckon you'll get over it. So will I, seeing as how we get his share of the claim. <laughs> now, you know, Frank, that's a mighty sensible attitude. Never did have much use for a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> After leaving the store, Frank Bryan went to the Victoria Hotel and registered for a room. Then he cleaned himself up and went to the Palace Cafe to see Lucy Allen. They sat down at the table in the corner. Oh, you sit here, Lucy. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Lucy, uh, I, uh, I have some bad news for you. Bad news? Oh, Frank, is it, is it about Steve? Yes, he... What? He died a week ago. Oh, no. Here, here, you, you better read this letter. Dear Lucy, I hope you'll never have to read this letter. If you do, it'll mean I didn't pull through this siege of pneumonia. I told Frank to give you my share of the gold we mine. It'll pay your passage back to the state with enough left over to tide you along for a while. So long, Jim. And remember, I love you. I I have the gold right here. Uh, Lucy, where are you going? I'm sorry, Frank. I can't talk anymore right now. I'm going back to my dressing room. At that same moment, in his cabin far to the north of Dawson City... Steve Walker was slowly opening his eyes. He saw a tall man bending over him. A man wearing the uniform of the Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. She's been ill with pneumonia. Pneumonia? Oh, yeah, yeah, now I remember. And maybe you can explain something to me. What do you mean? When I found you here, you were out of food and the wood box was empty. But later on, I found a perfectly good load of firewood dumped out in the underbrush in back of the cabin. Yeah, I can explain it all right. My partner pulled out and left me here to die. He took all the food with him and dumped the firewood just to make sure I didn't survive. Better tell me the whole story. Uh, there's nothing much to tell. The last night that I remember, I was pretty sick. Next morning, I woke up and Frank was gone. Frank is your partner? That's right, Frank Bryan. I'm Steve Walker. Were you running short of food? No, no, no. There was plenty of food for both of us. Evidently, Frank just saw an easy way to get rid of me, and he took it. Why did he want to get rid of you? For one thing, once I was dead, my share of the claim would go to him and Casper Lubbock. And I have a hunch there was another reason, too. Huh? What was it? I'm engaged to a girl named Lucy Allen. Frank was in love with her, too. He probably figured if I were dead, she'd be willing to marry him. I see. 
There are all sorts of ways to kill a man, but this is just about the most cold-blooded I've ever run across. Oh, it's a miracle you happened along when you did. I... I owe my life to you, Sergeant. Forget it, Steve. I'll arrange to have someone come out here with a team and some supplies. I'll sure appreciate that, Sergeant. By the way, assuming your partner went back to Dawson, do you have any idea where he might put up? No, but Casper Lubbock might know where he's staying. Why? Because I intend to arrest him for attempted murder. When Sergeant Preston arrived back in Dawson City, he went first to Mounted Police Headquarters and made his report to Inspector Conrad. Then he went to Casper Lubbock's general store. There you go, boy. Uh, Sergeant Preston and King. Howdy, Sergeant. Hello, Casper. What can I do for you? I understand you grub stake two young fellows by the name of Steve Walker and Frank Bryan. Yes, that's right. I reckon you must be here in connection with Steve's death. What makes you think he's dead? Well, shucks, sure, he died of pneumonia. Leastways, that's what Frank told me. He was lying. Was it? Steve had pneumonia, all right. Mighty bad case of it, too. Frank went off and left him without food or firewood, expecting him to die. Luckily, I came along in time to save him. Great day in the morning. Who'd ever have thought Frank would pull a trick like that? Why, it ain't human. Attempted murder is what it amounts to. Well, uh, where is Steve? Did you bring him to town with you? No, he's still back at his cabin. I was afraid the trip might be too much for him. Yeah. That was probably why. You know if Brian's still here in Dawson? Why, no, I don't, Sergeant. I ain't seen him since he first hit town. Oh? Well, thanks anyway. All right, King, come along. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye. Hey, why you not tell the Sergeant where Frank Bryan is staying? You know he's staying at the Victoria Hotel. You're sure I know it. Louis... How would you like to make yourself a thousand dollars? A thousand dollar? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I want you to kill a man. Namely, Steve Walker. <laughs> continue our adventure in just a moment. There he goes, stealing second base. Boy, what a slide. He's safe at second. Wow, kids, what excitement at a ball game. What fun to see real major or minor league ball games and the star players in person. Why miss these thrills? Come on out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. Right now, you can get baseball tickets to get in the ballpark free if you're 12 years or younger. Just bring mom or dad a paying adult. Here's all you do to get your free tickets. Get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off a box top and send with your name and address to baseball by... Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on every ticket. Why, the whole family would have the time of their life at the ball game. For your free ticket, just send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10 and you'll get two free tickets. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't miss the big game. Send now. <laughs> To continue. After learning from Sergeant Preston that Steve Walker was still alive, Casper Lubbock offered Louie, his assistant, a thousand dollars if he would kill Steve. You want me to kill Steve Walker? I don't understand. You don't, Em. Eh? Well, listen, and I'll explain it to you, Em. Eh? Now, suppose Frank checks out of his hotel before Preston can locate him. He tells the desk clerk he's going back to his claim. Later on, Steve Walker is found murdered. What do you suppose the Mondays will think? Uh, we, they will blame the murder on Brian. Now uh, you're beginning to catch on. But what will happen when the Mondays do catch Brian? Maybe he will be able to prove he did not commit the murder. We won't have to worry about that for the simple reason that Brian is going to disappear permanently. Oh, how you figure that? You leave that to me, Louis. The important thing is, the Maltese will think he disappeared to avoid hanging for murder. And with both Frank and Walker out of the way, 
I'll be sole owner of a valuable gold mine. <laughs> we, oui. yeah, that is pretty smart plan. Well, how about it? I'm offering you a thousand dollars, easy money. For a thousand dollar, I'd do it. I kill Steve Walker. At that same moment, Frank Bryan was talking to Lucy Allen at the Palace Cafe. After leaving the cafe, Frank headed back to his hotel. To his surprise, he found Casper Lubbock waiting for him on the boardwalk outside the hotel. Casper, what are you doing here? Wait for you, that's what. I didn't want to go inside for fear the desk clerk might remember my face. What are you talking about? I came to warn you, Frank. You're in trouble, plenty of trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble? You told me Steve died of pneumonia. Well? He ain't dead, Frank. He's still alive. What's that? A mountie came along and saved his life. Steve told him the whole story of how you went off and left him to die. Now the mountie's in town looking for you. He aims to arrest you for attempted murder. Oh, Michael. Now, what you've got to do is clear out of the territory of Pronto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but I'll need some supplies. Surely will. I figured on that, yeah. Now, here's what you better do. Get your gear together right away and check out of your hotel room. Tell the desk clerk you're heading out to your claim. Then what? Stop by the store with your sled, and I'll have a bunch of supplies all ready for you. By the time the money's discover you didn't go out to your claim, you can be safe over the border. A short time later, Frank Bryan arrived at Casper Lubbock's store. Well... That was quick work, Brian. Did you check out your hotel already? Yeah, yeah, I checked out. What about those supplies? I've got them all ready for you in the back room. Come on back with me and check them over. You can tell me if there's anything else you need. Okay. Yeah, here's your supplies right here. Uh, good, I'll get them together. As Frank Bryan bent over the supplies, which were stacked on the floor, a steel blade suddenly flashed in the storekeeper's hand. <laughs> That takes care of you, Brian. Hey, Lee, come back here. Oh, you have killed him. Sure, he's dead in the door, Nail. Go out and drive his team around to the back of the store. Oh, bien. Then what? You'll take care of Steve Walker the same way I've just taken care of Frank Bryan. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston was interviewing Lucy Allen at the Palace Cafe. He had just broken the news that Steve Walker was still alive. Oh, I, I, I don't know what to say, Sergeant. It's the most wonderful news I've ever had in my life. Have you seen Frank Bryan recently? Well, yes. He was in less than an hour ago. Oh, and to think he wanted me to marry him after what he did to Steve. Don't worry, he'll pay for his crimes. You know where he's staying while he's in town? Oh, no. No, I don't. If he comes to see you again, let us know. In the meantime, I'll have the city patrol try to locate him. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hey, kids, do you know you can come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team? See all the players in person whose pictures you see on the sport page or the screen. Watch those thrilling homers sail into the grandstand. Watch the exciting double plays and eat hot dogs and drink pop with a cheering crowd. Yes, count yourself in on the fun. Right now, you can get into the ballpark free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring a paying adult like mom or dad. To get your free ticket, get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. You'll get two free tickets by sending the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Details are on every ticket. Hurry, send the box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice or Muffet shredded wheat or the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Send to baseball, box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait. Be a guest of your favorite team. Following morning, Sergeant Preston learned from Constable Ross 
that Frank Bryan had already left Dawson. Bryan was staying at the Victoria Hotel, but he checked out yesterday afternoon. He told the desk clerk he was heading back out to his claim. Has his room been occupied yet? I don't know. Why? If King can pick up his scent, we may be able to track him down more rapidly. That's a good idea. We'd better get our teams and get over to the hotel right now. Come along, King. <laughs> Luckily, Brian's room had not yet been occupied, and King was able to pick up his scent. From the hotel, the trail led straight to Casper Lubbock's general store. King! Well, howdy, Shaggy. Have you found Brian yet? Not yet, but we've picked up his trail, and it led straight here to your store. To my store? What do you mean, Sergeant? Are you stalling, Casper? King has Brian's scent. There's no doubt he stopped off at your store before leaving town. Shucks, you. Well, in that case, I, I reckon I'd better tell the truth. He, he uh, did stop in here, Sergeant. Yesterday afternoon, he stocked up on supplies. You knew he was wanted by the police? Why didn't you let us know? Well, I... Well, hang it all, Sergeant. I reckon I'm just tender-hearted, that's all. Brian may deserve to go to jail, but I didn't want to be the one who came there. Sergeant, look at King. He's going back in the stock room. Hey, yes, yes. Uh, Brian went in the stock room with me while I was filling his order. And in fact, he drove his team uh, around back of the store so he wouldn't have so far to carry the stuff when he loaded it on the sled. I see. Come on, Alex. We'll go out the back way so King can follow the scent. Meanwhile, King had caught the scent of death. He knew that the man his master was looking for had been dead when he left the store. What's wrong, fella? What was he trying to tell us, Sergeant? I wish I knew. Well, apparently he still has the scent. Let's go. Several miles outside of town, King turned off the trail and headed into a gully filled with drift snow and underbrush. The sergeant and Constable Ross followed. I wonder what King's up to, Sergeant. I don't know. Looks as though he's found something. <laughs> All right, fellow, I'll see what's under here. We'd like to clear away this underbrush. Holy smoke. A dead man. Yes. Must be Frank Bryan. No identification on him, but he fits the description. King had his scent. I suppose he was waylaid last night? Maybe. Then again... And then again, what? Well, I'm just remembering the way King acted back at the store. There's such a thing as the scent of death. You mean maybe Casper killed him? Oh, that'd certainly be a good reason for not reporting that Brian had come to his store. By golly, that's right. Whoever killed him, one thing's sure. Someone hid his body here, and that person must have left a scent. How about it, King? <laughs> After sniffing carefully around the spot, King led the two Mounties out of the gully and back onto the trail. <laughs> Heading away from town. Maybe it wasn't Casper who killed him after all. Perhaps not. Alex, I want you to take Brian's body back to town. In the meantime, King and I are going after the person who hid the body in that gully. Louis had traveled most of the night and by now was many miles from Dawson. As a result, it was three days later before the sergeant finally caught up with him. King, sprinting ahead of the team, closed in on Louis with a fierce growl. Sergeant Preston shouted the command to halt. Stop in the name of the con! A moment later, the sergeant drew up to his quarry. Sergeant Preston, wait for you stop me this way. I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Frank Bryan. What's that? Sergeant, what do you mean? Never mind playing innocent, Louis. Got your hands up. Keep them up while I search you. Carrying a gun, eh? We, oui, I carry a gun. It does not prove I am a murderer. King followed your scent from the spot where Brian's body was found. Sergeant, I am innocent. I swear I'm not killed, Brian. Then if you don't want to hang, you'd better tell me who did. We, oui, we, oui, I thought. It was Casper Lubbock who killed Brian. Why? He wanted to get Brian's share of the gold mine. And he paid you to get rid of the body, is that it? We, oui, we, oui, that is so. But I had nothing to do with the murder, I swear it. Huh? All right, Louie. We'll see what kind of a story Casper has to tell when we get back to Dawson. In the meantime, turn around and hold out your hands. Watch him, King, while I snap on these handcuffs. After turning the teams around and hitching them in tandem, the sergeant started back to Dawson with his prisoner riding the forward sled. That night, they made camp on the banks of a small stream. Soon after turning in, the sergeant was awakened by a sudden growl from King. <laughs> What's wrong, fella? Wolves? By the light of the still-glowing campfire, he saw that the great dog's fur was bristling all along his spine. 
Suddenly, a twig snapped, and King started forward with a fierce snarl. At that moment, a shot rang out. The great dog fell. King! Never mind him, Christian. Get your hands up. Casper Lubbock. Yeah, that's right. So he took you prisoner, eh, Louis? Oui, he put the handcuff on me. Well, you won't have to wear him no longer. Unlock him, Preston, and don't try no funny stuff when you're reaching your pocket for the key. Under the threat of Casper's leveled gun, the sergeant had no choice but to obey the command. A moment later, Louis's hands were free. Ah, it is lucky you show up. How come you find us out here on the trail? Well, it's a long story, Louis. When I found out King was following Frank's scent, I knew he'd find the body for sure. So I started out to warn you not to kill Steve Walker. Kill Steve Walker? Sure. Didn't Louis tell you? Wait, wait, I know, tell you. The plan was to kill Steve and make it look as if Frank had disappeared. Now, wait. You would blame the murder on Frank and I'd be left as sole owner of the gold mine. You fool, why for you tell him all this? That's why not. Preston can't use the information against us. Not after he's dead. You're going to kill him? That's right. And I reckon there's no reason to waste any time. Meanwhile, unnoticed by either Casper or Louis, King was stirring weakly. The bullet had creased his head and stunned him. As the great dog struggled back to consciousness, he remembered just one thing. The fact that his master was in danger. Opening his eyes, he saw Casper Lubbock raise his gun to fire at the sergeant. With a ferocious snarl, King launched himself at the throat. The gun flew from Casper's hand as King's jaws closed on his arm. Before Louis could spring to his aid, the sergeant turned and dealt him a terrific right to the jaw. Oh, now I pay you back. Oh, no, you don't. Louis was big and brawny, and he could take twice the punishment of an ordinary man. Again and again, he lunged at the Mountie, swinging his knotted fist with terrific power. But in the end, it was the Mountie's superior skill that told. After a series of punches that left Louis dizzy and glassy-eyed, he finished him off with a smashing right uppercut. Oh! Get him away from me. All right, King. Let him up, boy. I have his gun. On your feet, Lubbock. And don't try any tricks. You'll hang for Brian's murder, and Steve Walker will wind up as the sole owner of that mine. All right, turn around. Hold out your wrist while I snap on these handcuffs. Now then, King. Let's have a look at you, fella. Oh. Well, it just creased your head and stunned you. Hey, Sunday, it's a lucky thing for you. It didn't kill him. And it's a lucky thing for you I'm wearing this uniform. Otherwise, before I put on those handcuffs, I'd have given you a worse beating than I gave Louis. <laughs> Good old king. Once again, you saved my life. Thanks to you, boy, this case is closed. Is electricity your friend? Yes, in most cases. It can be a bad enemy, though, if you direct it through electrical wires which have frayed insulation and can result in costly fires. Remember, the electricity in your home should be your servant, not your boss. But careless wiring will help electricity take over. Check the wires on your electrical appliances, lamp cords, and the other items in your home that have electric wires to make sure that the insulation is in good condition and is capable of preventing short circuits and fires. Defective wiring isn't the only way a fire can start in your home either. Don't permit rubbish or waste paper to accumulate. Clean out your cellar, attic, and closets and eliminate possible starting places for fires. Almost a thousand fires daily take place in homes across the country, due in most cases to carelessness. Be sure your home isn't one of them. Check up and clean up. Don't gamble with fire. The odds are against you. This message is brought to you as a public service. These specially recorded radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you Monday through Friday by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. This 
is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Thank <laughs> you.